In this video, we're going to look at density, viscosity, and drag. So this is only in the edXL A-level physics syllabus. So if you guys aren't doing that syllabus, you can pretty much click off the video. You don't need to worry about it. So how do we calculate up thrust? I'm not sure if you guys have learned, but actually, it's better if I show you in terms of a diagram. Sorry, I'm horrible at drawing. But essentially, if you place any object inside of water, that water level will rise ever so slightly. Or even more, if it's a very large object that you place into the water. Now, the weight of fluid that rises is what the up thrust is equal to. So let's put that into words. We can say up thrust is equal to the weight of fluid that's displaced. So although we can't find um, up thrust directly, we can find it using this equation. We can find the weight of fluid that's displaced because we know weight is equal to mg. So we can separate this into the mass of fluid that's displaced multiplied by the value of um, g. So let's write this out. Mass of fluid displaced multiplied by g. How do we find the mass of fluid that's displaced? Well, if we break this down, it's told you the density of the liquid. It's also told you the volume of the uh, sphere that's causing this whole um, experiment to even take place. And we also know that density is equal to mass over volume. This is given in your equation sheet, by the way, if you weren't really sure of it. I'm just going to change the thickness of the pen. Multiplying both sides by volume, we get mass equals density times volume. So we can break this down even further. We can say that the density of the fluid um, multiplied by the volume of fluid that's displaced, which is basically equal to the volume of the sphere. So that's, sorry, the powers are very small, <laughs> I just realized. These are both powers of minus 3, and this is a power of minus 8. Um, and you can multiply onto that g, and that will give you the weight of fluid that's displaced. For this question, that's 1300 multiplied by the volume of 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3. Oh, sorry. Um, I used the weight of the sphere. It's a volume of 6.5 times 10 to the minus 8 multiplied by 9.81. Now, in a lot of students um, argue, do you use 9.8 or 9.81? In A-level physics, I'd always recommend 9.81. But if you, uh, if you do do A-level maths, then 9.8 is a preferred value. And that would equal 8.3 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 4 newtons, which pretty much just rounds to 8 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons, this value here. It tells you that the terminal dis velocity is found to be 4.6 times 10 to the minus 2 meters per second. Use this value to show the viscosity of the liquid is about that value there. Let's break down all the forces that are acting on this ball as it enters the fluid. So there's the weight of the ball, it's or sphere itself, weighing it down. There's the up thrust, which acts against it. And there's also the viscous drag force, which acts when a ball enters the fluid. Now, it tells you that it's traveling at a terminal velocity. That's very important because a terminal velocity is a constant velocity that it's traveling at. It's like the final velocity, if you get what I mean, that it travels at um, after it's accelerated or decelerated. That means that the speed is not changing, meaning the acceleration is zero. If the acceleration is zero, that means that the resultant force acting on it is zero. That's important because it means that the, all the upward forces, the up thrust plus the drag, are being balanced by all the downward forces, which is weight in this case. To find the um, viscosity, we're going to start by finding the drag force because we know a separate equation for the drag force. We know that the force is equal to 6 times pi times radius times viscosity times uh, velocity. So you guys might not know that, but it is in your equation sheet. So don't worry too much about it. So we're going to focus on finding that value of cap um, that drag force. Drag force is the weight which we actually um, are given. The weight of the sphere is 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3. By the way, I would just write out an extra step of working out. Um, um, so it's 4.8 times 10 to the minus 3. Take away the value of up thrust, which we just calculated, actually. 8.3 times 10 to the minus 4. By the way, if you do use um, calculate the wrong value here, but you use it later in calculation, just like I've done here, you do still get the method mark. Um, putting um, that into the calculator, you get that the drag force is actually just 3.97 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 newtons. Uh, like I mentioned before, the drag force is equal to all of this. So let's make it equal to all of that. 6 times pi times radius times viscosity times velocity. Um, what you now want to find is the viscosity, and you can find that by dividing both sides by 6 pi rv. So let's do that. 3.97 times 10 to the minus 3, all divided by 6 times pi times the radius, which is um, given here. The radius of the sphere is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Let's write that out. 
multiplied by the velocity that uh, the sphere travels at, which is 4.6 times 10 to the minus 2. Sorry if you can't see that power either. There's, there is a minus there. Um, it's just very faint lines for some reason from this exam board. Um, putting that all that into the calculator, you get a value of... Oh no, <laughs> I forgot to put it into calculator. I'm just going to do it very quickly now. So... And I've left my calculator downstairs. But uh, this is all you do to get to the viscosity. Um, Alright, sorry about that, guys. Um, the students carrying out this experiment wish to repeat it on another day using the same equipment. State another relevant variable that needs to be controlled to make this a fair test. Well, to make it a fair test, we don't want... Um, we want to control something so that it doesn't change anything in the experiment. So what can we do? The temperature would be a very good answer because if you increase the temperature of the liquid that it's in then that would affect the forces involved that would affect the drag force because drag force it depends on the velocity and the velocity would now be larger and the drag force would be larger and then that affects the whole experiment if that makes sense thanks for watching i hope this video helped if you have any tutoring inquiries be sure to visit my website www.excelleneducation.co.uk it's on the first link in the description too